Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I was just prospecting for oil behind my couch back here. So, should you buy a 2013 Mac Pro in 2019? I'm Scott with Techno Eclipse, and if you thought the intro was hilarious, if you don't hit subscribe, I'm gonna find you. So, should you buy the 2013 Mac Pro in 2019? This is a tough question for me because I'm somebody who unabashedly loves the 2013 Mac Pro. I love the computer. Performance-wise, it's not that great. The jump up from 2012 to 2013 was marginal at best, and the cooling in the Mac Pro is slightly below average at best. <laughs> the dual GPUs don't make any sense at all. It did make sense at the time. However, they're just not really utilized fully in most modern softwares and programs. The 2013 Mac Pro was, by all means, a blunder and it was a little ahead of its time if Apple were to release this 2013 Mac Pro in 2019 with more cores and a single GPU along with Thunderbolt 3 instead of Thunderbolt 2 or maybe Thunderbolt 4 with what theoretically 64 gigabits per second. I think that a lot of people would actually really like this computer with the external upgrades but Apple was unfortunately about three years too early on the Mac Pro 2013 Thunderbolt 3 was just not a thing yet, and Thunderbolt 2 just isn't quite fast enough. So should you consider purchasing one? This is a tough question because obviously there is this market for prosumers that can't afford an iMac Pro, but probably want more than what a 2012 Mac Pro can offer. And they want something like an iMac Pro, but maybe they don't need the screen, or maybe they just can't quite afford like a $3,000 price tag on a used iMac Pro. Well, the 2013 Mac Pro sort of fits in that category. There is a 12 core variant of the 2013 Mac Pro that is about 10% less CPU powerful than the eight core iMac Pro and obviously GPU scores it's way behind, but that's what eGPUs are for. So a 2013 Mac Pro can cost anywhere from like a thousand bucks to like 5,000 bucks. If you spend 5,000 bucks on it, you shouldn't, you really shouldn't do that. That's way too much money. But if you were to purchase one for about a thousand bucks, you can actually upgrade that CPU relatively easily. I'll have a link down below showing you how to upgrade that CPU. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, if you can upgrade that to the E5 2697V2 Xeon processor from Intel, that's a mouthful. I'm pretty sure that's right too. I might be wrong, but it's a 12 core, 24 thread processor. Still beast in 2019, obviously. It's, it's actually getting tougher to really recommend older computers now because newer computers for at least the pros, it's almost makes more sense to just go with like a midline i5 six core processor iMac from Apple as opposed to an older Xeon processor based computer from Apple as well. It's a really weird time with CPUs it's, I don't know, I, I guess I'm having trouble suggesting some of these older computers sometimes because it's like, well, yeah, you could buy this, but for like a hundred bucks more, you could get an iMac with like a better processor, not quite better, but a really good processor with a better graphics card, more storage, easier upgrade to RAM. I don't know, it's, it's a weird time right now for this type of market. Obviously, I know Xeon processors have their place. I know music editors really rely on that. I believe if you're writing code, it helps to have a Xeon processor. Basically, and obviously for video editing, basically a Xeon processor is, is built to run at full tilt the entire time of its CPU life cycle. Whereas consumer chips are more meant to be used for like, I mean, they're meant to be used, don't get me wrong, but they're meant to be used for like short bursts of power. That's why their boost speeds are normally a lot higher than their baseline clock speed. So the Xeon processors have their place, obviously, but in 2019, Xeon processors aren't the only one with double digit cores. It's crazy with Intel releasing eight core processors and then in the future it looks to be like 10 core processors and Ryzen obviously releasing 12 core processors to the masses, which is, which is just absurd. And it's a tough time to really even suggest a Mac when you could build a way more powerful gaming PC. And obviously I don't really suggest this because I know Mac OS has its place, but you can build a way more powerful AMD Ryzen based computer for like so much less money. I'm in a tough spot right now because I like price to performance and I like Mac computers and they don't really go together. And recently they really aren't going together, especially because these old Mac pros are holding their value almost too well. So 
Obviously, if you buy one for like 1100 bucks, you're gonna get a quad core base model one. You can upgrade that easily to the 12 core E5 2697V2, 12 core 24 thread processor. It's 10% less powerful than the eight core CPU inside of the iMac Pro, but it also costs like 300 bucks. They're pretty cheap now, 400 bucks, and to install, it's not that difficult. So for roughly around $1,500, you could have a pretty capable 12 core Mac Pro computer that's more powerful than the 2012 Mac Pro, 2010 or 2009 Mac Pro, but slightly less powerful than the iMac Pro. This is basically just due to Apple using older architecture, the 2013 Mac Pros, and then four years of CPU updates later, they came out with a new Mac computer. Had there been a Mac Pro released in 2015, I would probably suggest going to buy that one, but the 2013 Mac Pro is what we're stuck with. So for 1500 bucks, you have a 12 core Mac Pro, and you can add an eGPU to that. Do keep in mind you have to buy cables for that, the eGPU itself, and then the graphics card. But that does allow for external expansion through the Thunderbolt 2 ports. I don't know if I'm so totally on board with this option. It's, I don't know, it's the 2013 Mac Pro. I like it so much, but I'm just, I'm having a tough time, like, really recommending it because it looks so nice, but to really make it a viable computer, you have to add in on an eGPU, especially for probably most people using this computer. I'm imagining there's gonna be a lot of graphics intensive tasks on it. And to use the old D300s or D500s or D700s inside of these probably just isn't going to work. Don't get me wrong, the D700s, if they're running together, are like it's like more powerful than a 1080. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's true. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's true, but obviously dual GPU support just isn't there. So you came here for the question, should you buy a 2013 Mac Pro in 2019? The only way I would buy one is if uh, you did what I laid out here. You buy the Mac Pro, the cheapest one, upgrade it yourself to the 12 core version, and then add an eGPU with like a Vega 56 or a Vega 64. And then at that price, you're about $2,000 all in on the computer and you should be fine for a few years. But the problem is, is at that point, there's no upgrade on the CPU. What you, where you're at is where you're capped. And the way the CPU race is going, it seems like 12 cores is gonna be mainstream in like budget computers here in the next four years. So obviously most people don't need 12 cores, but as programs get more intensive, as everything gets bigger and harder to work with, 4K files become 8K files, 8K files become 16K files and everything just sort of starts to grow like that. It's tough to really suggest this 2013 Mac Pro in 2019. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of it. It's it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful machine, but I'm having a tough time like really suggesting it. If when the 2019 Mac Pros are released, the 2013 Mac Pros drop a lot in price, I would say down to around $800. It starts to become a little bit more enticing, but for 11 to 1200 bucks now, and that's just a quad core version, you're better off just buying an iMac with a 4K, 5K screen, six cores, 12 threads. That just makes a lot more sense right now. It's got a, it's got everything more updated. It'll be supported for a lot longer. You get a better screen. Obviously there's no real internal upgrades you can do without ripping that screen off. But like, I don't know, the upgrades to the 2013 Mac Pro, it's enticing, don't get me wrong, and it's way overkill for a majority of people but you're capped at 12 cores. That sounds silly to say, but in the future, I'm just not exactly sure where we're headed, and the 2013 Mac Pro just doesn't seem well-equipped for a future. Not that it's not a usable computer, don't get me wrong, 12 cores for me is way overkill, but if you're somebody who is willing to spend $2,000 on a computer, I imagine that you're probably doing some pretty intensive work, and those old X79 motherboards using those older chips, I guess I'm gonna say don't buy it, but it's obviously it's up to you. But if it were me, I would probably just lean the 2012 Mac Pro and save your money, and then in a few years or in a couple months be able to buy an iMac, or if they update the Mac Minis here pretty soon, you could probably do something like that. But it's it's a really interesting time, especially with Ryzen coming out and the price to performance getting so good, especially for people who use multiple threads in their tasks that they do. I'm having a tough time really suggesting this 2013 Mac Pro, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about why you should buy it or why you shouldn't buy it. Obviously, I know some people hate this computer, but 
you can't deny it's probably the most beautiful and the most powerful computer we've ever seen in that form factor. So I'm Scott with Techno Eclipse. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.